Now, even though this is a basic course on PowerShell, I don't want to leave you without mentioning PowerShell and WMI. Now, what is WMI? It is the Windows Management Instrumentation functionality that is part of the Windows operating system. Now, this is actually Microsoft's implementation of the Web-Based Enterprise Management, or WBEM, and Common Information Model Standards. What this does is it exposes information on almost every aspect of a Windows computer to you. We're talking about deep under the hood things that have to do with the operating system, hardware, and software. Just keep in mind that WMI has a reputation for being complex. Well, there's a lot going on in the computer, and WMI itself is its own little world. This is way too complex to really adequately cover at all in one video, but I want to kind of get you started and just kind of show you what some WMI looks like and how easy it can be. PowerShell greatly reduces that complexity that everybody's always been kind of frightened of with WMI. Now, PowerShell provides two ways of working with WMI. Make sure you understand this. There are WMI commandlets, things like get WMI object, invoke WMI method, and so forth. There's quite a few of those. Then you will also see some CIM commandlets in PowerShell 3.0 and later. And they do exactly the same things. There's a correlating CIM commandlet for most of the WMI commandlets. And you'll see things like get CIM associated instance, get CIM class, get CIM instance. And it just kind of goes on and on. Now, what's the big deal here? Future WMI development will concentrate on the CIM commandlets. So if you're going to start now and learn to work in PowerShell and script against WMI, then you probably want to use the CIM commandlets. WMI data is organized in a hierarchy of collections very similar to the way the Windows registry is organized. And the WMI collections are known as namespaces. And then those namespaces contain classes, again, very similar to the .NET framework. And each class represents a specific type of manageable Windows component that WMI can query. You can see these in the computer management tool. Now, what I want to do is just going to jump out to the start screen and just search for management. And notice there's computer management. And I'm just going to open this tool up briefly here. Here's computer management, right? If I expand services and applications, right there is WMI control. Well, if I right click on that, now you'll have to left click first or you won't get the right pop up menu here. But I want to left click on properties then. And I want you to notice that if I look at the security tab, this gives me the list of the namespaces that are out there in WMI for this particular machine. For example, there's hardware, and I can at least see that particular namespace. And there's a Microsoft namespace, there's SQL Server namespace here, and I don't want to go too far here. Now, if I go to the Advanced tab, I can see the default namespace for the root level of my WMI objects, and it's root backslash CIMV2. So you will see this in a lot of the WMI or CIM examples that you might find out there when you're looking around for examples and you're starting to dig a little deeper in this. You can see the namespaces out there in the computer management tool, and that's what I just stepped through there for you. So let's go look at just a couple of very simple WMI examples to give you an idea of what this thing is exposing to us. I'm going to use the WMI version, and then I'll use the CIM version for you. So I'm going to get a WMI object, and I'm going to get the win32 underscore BIOS information. And that easily, I can see the version of BIOS I'm running, the manufacturer, the exact name of it, serial number. It's just really cool stuff, right? Very easy to get that. I could also get that by using sim instance and call the very same class, win32. We can do WMI object, win32 processor, and you can guess what that's going to do. It's gonna give us information about the processor on our machine. So notice the Intel 64, there's the device ID, manufacturer's genuine Intel, the maximum clock speed, the name of this, it's a Core 2 Duo P8600, 2.4 gigahertz, and the socket designation. 
Now I can do the very same thing here by calling get sim instance. Same information is going to come back in a little bit different format. This is the way that PowerShell makes getting into WMI very easy. Trust me, there is an ocean of more information and more tricks and more things to learn about WMI. I just kind of want to scratch the surface for you and show you and let you know almost anything that could be known about your computer is accessible through the WMI or CIM commandlets in PowerShell. And this is greatly simplifying that whole process for you.